there's only two reasons anyone returns to Willow Falls. One reason, to bury their parents. The other reason, to bury their past. Well, if it isn't the famous Carolini. If I'd have known you were coming, I'd have rolled out the red carpet. Dad, please don't make fun of me. I'm sorry. Come on in, Ness. I have dinner on. Dad, don't call me that. Seriously, Don? I bet you just loved writing that piece. Crap, Dad! Here you go. I'm not hungry. I guess you, uh, really stepped in at this time. You know, this is your mom's recipe. It's so good. It's good to have you home. Good morning, Miss Lenny. Today you'll be reading for the role of Angry Daughter. You may now begin your read, Miss Lenny. Read the lines as they're written, Miss Lynn. Mother. 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 Hey, she is alive. Haha, uh -huh, very funny. What time is it? It is, let me see, almost seven o'clock. You're wearing your wedding ring again. How long has that been going on? You know, I miss your mom so much sometimes, and every once in a while I put it on, it helps. What's for breakfast? <laughs> breakfast? What? 
Is it too early for breakfast? Yeah, by about 12 hours. It's 7 p.m. That out there is a sunset, not a sunrise. You've been sleeping for 24 hours. Drugs? No. But thank you for offering. I've had plenty. This is serious. Sweetheart, we have to talk about this. Sign or amphetamines. What, cocaine isn't good enough for you guys anymore? No, not enough kick. <sighs> Heavenly Father. Don't bring him into it. Yes, Ness. Bring him into it. Sweetheart, you have left God out of your life far too long. God is the strength of your heart if you let him be. Please believe that. Dad's words were powerful, but I can already feel the addiction crawling all over me. And I never felt so far from God. You know, I feel I should tell you, you're fixing to snort my Lipitor. You know, the only high you're going to get from that is a healthy LDL. Yeah. 
There are no drugs here, Ness. Ness. What? There's nothing here. No. Talk to me. I'm not awake, and I'm not asleep. I'm not alive, and I'm not dead. Nothing feels real. Can you feel it? Dad, what are we doing? Can you feel the rain? Yes. yes. The rain is life from God, given to us in the darkness, even in our darkest of storms, it will nourish you, Ness. I know, I know you are lost right now in your darkness, but you are alive, you are awake, and this, this is real, Ness. Jesus said, whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never be thirsty again. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to be putting in an underground water tank. What I want to do is collect the rainwater from the gutters and divert it to the water tank. But first, my goal is today to dig this trench from here all the way to the grass line there by dusk. Whoa, you are never going to make it, old man. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that vote of confidence. But I think with God's help, and maybe a little bit of your help, mm. I think we can get it done. Come on. Okay. I can do all things through him. Who gives me strength? That's right. My father's known in Willow Falls as being a good farmer and an even better pastor. Boy, Dad, you got a lot of corn this year. You know, I leased the land out this year because I realized there's a lot more to life than just farming. However, Dad didn't plant this year. I can only imagine the humiliation of a pastor with a drug-addicted daughter. Dad never showed it. From the time I showed up two days ago, he's been his usual, patient, loving self. It reminds me of the lesson he taught me the year Mom died. I was young, but I remember. I remember all of it. Mom died June 6th that year. It wasn't quick. Brain cancer. Dad loved her so much and grieved. <laughs> I loved her so much and got angry. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't control my anger. Even in Dad's grief, he was patient and kind. But every storm passes, and once I calmed down, Dad took me out to the cross in the back of the house. Dad told me when I lose my temper, I am sinning against God the Father. Then he said these words, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. Dad told me that every time I lost my temper, he would drive another nail into the cross and each round nail head would represent a sin against God. By the end of the summer, I had gotten my anger under control, and once again, we stood at the cross together. Dad explained that every nail head makes a moment of sadness to my father. But even worse, it represented a moment of sadness to God. I had made God sad, not angry, not vengeful. I told dad I was sorry, and I was, and dad knew it. 
He said, remember this feeling, Ness? This is what true repentance feels like. Then he smiled and said, and this is what forgiveness looks like. He said, the Father sent His Son Jesus to pay for this so you don't have to. He loves you that much. I said, but Dad, the holes are still there. What about all the holes? Dad pointed to the holes and said, the holes are the consequences of your sins. The sin is forgiven, but the scars remain. An amazing lesson for a 10-year-old, don't you think? Dad, we're never gonna make it by dusk. <sighs> you know, you might be right. But I have a solution that might get us to where we need to be. So, take a break and I'll be right back. I remember when Dad drove that big nail in. It was the last lesson he taught me before I went off to Hollywood. I did not listen. It was the morning I was leaving for Hollywood to work as an actress on my first project. How it happened was pure luck. Video monologue seen by the right agent. Just a small independent film. Who knew it would have taken off like it did? This is it. Dad, are you ready? Not just yet. Could you come with me? Dad. I got a roll. Dad, what are you doing? Open that. Dad, this is way too much. I can't take it. Yes, you can. Listen, that is, it's not a handout. I just want to pay you for 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> you gotta admit, that's a lot of scratch for nothing more than your undivided attention. Can you give me that? Yes, sir, I can. Great. Let's go out back. Now, a man puts his house up for sale, and he finds a potential buyer. But that man is so poor, he cannot afford the full asking price of the house. So with a lot of haggling back and forth, the owner agrees to sell his house for half price with one stipulation, that he retains ownership of a single man above the front door. Now that's not a bad offer, right? A couple years go by. The original owner comes back. He wants his house back. The new owner is unwilling to sell it to him. The original owner is mad and he goes off and he happens to come across the carcass of a dead dog. And he drags that thing back and he hangs it on that single nail that he still owns. Now, as you can imagine, the stench from that dog made the house unlivable and it forced the man to sell his house back to the former owner. Sweetheart, what I'm trying to tell you is this, is that if you give the devil even one small peg in your life, I guarantee you he will come back and hang his rotting garbage from you. Promise me, please promise me you won't let him have a foothold in your life. Promise me you won't. They don't have to. Dad, I won't, I promise. Don't worry. Use this, we would have been done in 15 minutes. No, no, where would the fun be in that? 
Aachen. Tractors. Uh, and that's a real kick in the shorts. What's wrong, Dad? It looks like there's an, another leak in the hydraulic line. You know, I something just didn't feel right when we were out in the field. So I <laughs> might have a little leak in my own hydraulics too. Dad, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Honey, I'm just getting older, worn out. Just like the tracker. It's not a problem. Come on, old man. I'll make you some tea to recharge your hydraulics. <laughs> That's perfect. That'd be great. Thank you. You know, Ness, I gotta admit, this has been one of the best days that I've had in a really long time. Best day, really? Yep. Best day. Digging a ditch. Well, Dad, what about tomorrow? What if we pop out the septic tank and really have some fun. <laughs> That's my daughter. Uh, I raised you great. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Hey, I heard you were back. I saw your dad down at the Fin and Feather having breakfast. He told me you came home. Go away, Stu. Come on, Ness. I'm not here to mess with you. I just need the keys to the tractor so I can fix it for John. I made you lunch. Thought you might be hungry. Yeah, because I'm just a sucker for a turkey sandwich. Mmm. Yeah. You sure you don't want to throw it at me from the front steps? Oh, I know. Oh, I'm sorry, Stu. I guess I deserve that. Relax. Come on. I'm just kidding. So how you been, Stu? You look good. <laughs> 16 years. That's how I've been. Yeah, I know. I did a lousy job of staying in touch with my friends. I'm sorry. Best friends since middle school. You, me, and Don. Oh, please. <laughs> Some best friend. I saw that hit piece she wrote about me in the paper, and it was so mean. Did she lie about you? No. So it was all true? All of it. Ness. Ness. What? So, uh, I see you're still making Vinetchup Classic. Equal parts. Mayonnaise and ketchup. Mm. So how's rehab going? 
Mm, it's going. I mean, Dad's helping. He's in full pastor mode. Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the laws of Christ. Wow, Stu, what happened? Did you accidentally wander into a church at some point? I know that necklace. Dad baptized you down at the falls. Yes, he did. Yeah, I, I had some problems of my own six or seven years ago. Yeah, but your dad helped me through it. I was in a, a real hopeless place. But where there's hopelessness, Christ gives you hope. Yeah, that helped you find Jesus, eh? Well, Jesus kind of found me. You know, he wasn't lost, I was. But uh, your dad, he was something else. He uh, really helped me. He's patient, kind, and listened. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I owe a lot to John. A lot of people in Willow Falls feel the same way. So, you just been hiding out here? Or? Yeah, I mean, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out since I got back. I, I am getting a little bit of cabin fever, though. Yeah, you, you want to go back to the shop with me? Oh, you have your own repair shop? <laughs> no, no, I, I haven't fixed tractors for money for a long time. I'm just helping John out today. Well, what do you do? I have my own production company, believe it or not. Yeah, we do TV commercials and industrial videos, and it's pretty cool. Really? Yeah. I've been in the darkness for 40 days. I've been searching for holy flames. Oh, Stu, this is legit. Yeah, thanks. Stu, unless my eyes are deceiving me, you brought Carolini to our studio. Yes, I did, Eli. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Willow Falls on Carolini. First appearance in a motion picture as a quiet sister in the dog sledders, breakthrough role as Cammy in Boston Heights, and then of course her starring roles in Vamp World, Vamp World Returns, and Vamp World Forever. And who can forget her Academy Award worthy performance in The Road to Darkness? at least worthy of a nomination. Stu, I think you call me something of a casual fan. Oh yeah, I'd safe to say that, man. It's not like I'm obsessed or anything. It's not like I have her poster in my room or anything like that. I'm just an admirer of good cinema. Whatever you say, buddy. <laughs> well, I am impressed, and it is very nice to meet you, Eli. <gasps> I just thought of something. I will be right back. I have no idea what's gotten into him. <laughs> That's okay. This is really nice. Cool, huh? This is Barry. Hey, Barry. This is Ness. Oh, hey. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Barry. Wow, this is so nice. Yeah, check this out. We just picked this little bad boy up. Uh, it's like the newest thing. How old's this camera, man? 1997. Brand new? High tech. Yeah. Yeah, the way of the future. We used to shoot on this thing. Whoa. Yeah. But disadvantages. It's heavy. It's expensive. It's analog. Look. <laughs> shoots on these. And now we shoot on this. Wow. Yeah. Mini DV. Digital video. That's crazy. The cameras are so much bigger in Hollywood. You think you could shoot a movie on something like that? Uh, I don't know, Ness. I mean, movies are shot on 35 millimeter. I mean. This is video. Nobody shoots movies on video. I disagree. <laughs> Kara, I mean, Miss Lenny, would you be so kind as to give me an autograph on this? Sure, on the front? Right under the picture, that'd be perfect. Sure, and Eli, please, call me Ness. Kara Lenny's just my stage name. Sure. Yeah, oh, cool, thank you. Hey man, uh, how are those Fresnels working out? You're gonna love this, too. Lamps are rated for 1K. The switches, however, 500 watt. Dude, they're fried. No worries, Stu. Already got the new ones ordered. Way to go, hero. Those idiots misspelled redemption.
Oh. Honey, the outer darkness is full of terrifying nightmares. But don't worry. That place isn't for you. Your place is in the light. But it is, though, Dad. I've done so many awful things. Why what? would Christ... What? Why would Christ forgive you? Why wouldn't you be cast into the lake of fire? Come here, let me show you something. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches were gathered, tossed into the fire, and burned. This, this, is your branch, yes. You see any difference in your branch? It's not burning. That's right. It's not burning because there is life in it. Life in you. Life because Jesus abides in you and you in him. Oh, sweetheart, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Trust his path that he has for you. Live the life that he has planned for you. Don't refuse the offer. Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yeah, yeah, it is working great. Thank you very much. You know, you are still the best hydraulic guy in the county. You know, what I've been hearing is that you're even better behind the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's Ness. Yeah, and thanks, Sue. Bye-bye. Hello? Oh, hey, Stu. Fixed for cash? Uh, what's the opposite of fixed? Yeah, that's right, broke. No, I'm not really interested in doing anything like that. 500 bucks. Wait, how does this fix my PR problems? Paul Rubens? Yeah, I remember Pee Wee. Don't refuse the offer. Say yes. yes. Ness, you look great. I can't thank you enough for doing this. Hey, Eli. Hey, Kara. I mean, Ness, Ness, you look really pretty. Thank you. What can I get for you? Uh, I need a coffee and uh, a chair in the shade, a script, 15 minutes to memorize it. Come on. Thank you. Thanks. How's it going, Hero? It's looking good. You guys got this okay? Yeah, we got it. Yep. Help me in the steady cam rig? Yeah, come on. How did you get her to do this, Stu? 
I just asked her. I didn't actually think she'd say yes. I can't believe we're gonna be shooting Carolyn. I know, right? <laughs> All right, how's that feel? It's great. Thanks, dude. All right. Pictures up. Ness? Over there. Well, let's give them a minute. Heavenly Father, we say amen. 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 I'm looking at it. All right, roll sound. Speed. Roll camera. Camera's rolling. Mark it. Tax 29. Camera one, scene one, take one. Mark. Action. Some people say I look like Carolini. That's because I am Carolyn. And my taxes are complicated. That's why I hire a team of CPAs to help keep me out of trouble. Hey, Greg. Hi, Kara. So let's She's say that you have a W-2 and maybe some investment. $9. Call Tax 29 today and let them help keep you out of trouble. I might know a thing or two about trouble. And cut. All right. That was great. Stuffed. Thank you, Stu. Appreciate it. Dad, you want to head home? I don't think so. You know, there has been a very pretty little lady giving me the eye all night long. So I think I'm going to grab myself another beer, head out on the dance floor with Miss Parson. <laughs> I'll make sure Ness gets home. Thank you. Appreciate it, Stu. You're welcome. Hey, John. Yeah. Go easy on the hanky panky. Can't promise you anything. Oh, he's ridiculous. <laughs> did you see the show? I did. I did. It was humiliating. Yeah. I think that's a good word to describe it. Humiliating. And that's, nobody's gonna remember that. Excuse me, Miss Carolini. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> Wow, I would love to stick around for this incredibly awkward moment, but you know what? I've got to run home and feed the cat or something. When did you get a cat? Well, I haven't yet, Stu, but I've been meaning to get one. Wait, hang on, Eli. I'm coming with you. No, 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 no. Just, just relax. Sit back down. Let's bury the hatchet. Just how about not in my bath this time, huh, Don? I was just doing my job. Oh, Don, that was so mean. You gave me plenty to work with, Miss Caroliny. <laughs> Ness, look at your dad. Hey, I'm sorry. I am, I am so sorry to both of you guys. I was a terrible friend and I got caught up in my own selfish life and I abandoned my best friends. I am really sorry to both of you. I've missed you so much. Hey, Liberta, we get three more beers over here. Ladies, that's it for me. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm going home. I'm going to bed. Well, I'm going to hit the ladies' room first, and you're taking me home, right? Yeah, let me pay the tab. Don? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, I got a bone to pick with you. What did I do now? You've been keeping the best looking girl down <laughs> all at the end of the bar to yourself. Not one of us could get a dance. Not one single guy could get a dance with her. Oh. Wait, have you been to the falls since no, you've been back? I haven't. No. All right, we're going. Okay, deal. We have real nature here. Not plastic trees on a sound. <laughs> real. I love you, girl. <laughs> I love you too. Bye. Been meaning to ask you, how'd it go with the uh, girls? Ah, you were right. It wasn't more than three seconds, and they're pals again. Ah. I was gonna drink that. I am so sorry. Please, let me buy you another one. You think I can't afford to buy me own drinks? No, I didn't mean that. I was just... I'm a broadcast process... Profes... <coughs> professional. Wow. Do you think you're better than me? Hey, Derek. She doesn't think that, right, Ness? Oh. Mm. Come on, Ness. No, of course I don't. There you go. Derek, how you been doing? I got beer on me boots. But other than that, I'm happier than flies on fresh manure. <laughs> For someone who says he's so happy, you look pretty upset. Listen, why don't you let me drive you home? I don't want to go home. I want another beer. Not again. Hey, Ted, you wanna? Yeah, I'm on my way. You know, is it too much to ask that I can relax on a Friday night? <laughs> you know, Derek, if I take you in tonight, you'll be sitting in jail for at least two days. Judge ain't in until Monday. What's today? Today's Friday, Derek, Friday. You know, Ted, I already told him I'd take care of it. So I'm gonna drive him home, he'll be all right. Okay? What do you say, Derek? I told you, I don't want to go home. I want another beer! Listen, the Taco Loco drive through closes at midnight. My treat. Come on. Tacos are? Yeah. That's in 20 minutes. Yes, it is. Better get going. We better leave right now. Hey, that's the spirit. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. They sing on the sleepless night. You okay? Try to catch me howling at the moon. Good evening, Pastor O'Malley. Doing okay? You good? What brings you to the Fin and Feather tonight? We're just driving home after bingo night, John. What are you doing out here so late? A little beer, dancing on a Friday night, that's all. Beer? John, need I remind you, you were once a man of the cloth yourself. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to remind me. John. I don't think God would approve of that behavior. Well, you know, I believe that his son did turn water into wine at the wedding feast. So I don't think God would be upset if I have a beer or two on a Friday night. John, hanging around with drunks and skullduggery. Just following the example of my best friend. Jesus, you moron!
Looks like we beat that home. Yeah. It looks like Taco Loco claimed another victim. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> you gonna walk you in? No, I'm good, Stu, but thank you. All right. Hey, nice try, pervert. Uh, that is not accurate. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hey, Ness. Yo, chicken wings, my damn. Hey, I should be so lucky. Thank you. Good night. doing here, Derek? Where's her? Showstrom House. Hello, Ness. Your dad must have brought me back here last night. <coughs> oh, but taste of that man at the top of loco. I'm sorry. Would you like a cup of coffee, Mr. Dewey? That sounds like a winner to me. You know, Derek, that was really hurtful what you did on your show the other day. Really hurtful, buddy. Yeah, it was. And I'm sorry. It seemed funny at the time. I watched it when it aired, and I regretted it. Well, why'd you do it? I was drunk when we shot it. I do dumb things when I'm drinking. Well, Derek, maybe you shouldn't drink. I can't seem to be having a good time without drinking. Well... You were plenty drunk last night. Were you having a good time? No. No, sir, you were not. Let me ask you a question. Fine, fire away. You just got up, right? Yeah, what about it? How comes you look so darn pretty right out of bed? Mr. Dewey, you old charmer, you. Underneath all that beard hair and that tough guy exterior, you, sir, are regular old softy. Mm. How can I stay mad at you after that? If that makes you feel any better, I'm still paying for it. What do you mean? The good citizens of Willow Falls didn't take too kindly to me riffing through your bad situation. This town loves your dad, and by proxy you. I've been a pariah ever since it aired. Lots of station complaints. They may or may not counsel me. Station manager is just dying to fill the midnight to 2 a.m. slot with infomercials. I have an idea. What's that? 
Okay. <clears throat> what if I go on your show and <clears throat> we do the entire show together? What do you think? You do that for me, Ness. Yeah, absolutely. Larson. What are you doing here? I spent the night. You slept with Derek, do No, Dewey. Don. Dad brought him back last night and he slept on the couch. Can we just drop him off at the Finn and Feather on our way through town? Man, you'll be freaking out for a second. Like, ew, he's almost as old as your dad. I heard that. I'm already 47 years old. <laughs> I happened to catch your show the weekend before last. Did you now, Miss Larson? Yeah, that was quite a movie. The Devil's Reign's a little rough around the edges, but it's got its charm. Just like you, Derek. <laughs> Think you need to work on your American accent, though. It's not very convincing. There's nothing wrong with my American accent. Oh, see, can you see? By the dawn's <laughs> early light What so proudly we held At the twilight <laughs> Six thirty then. Yep. Anything in particular you want me to wear? Ew. What? Surprise <laughs> me. I'm gonna be on the Cleve Hammer show. <laughs> There's your big comeback, Ness. <laughs> <laughs> nice knowing you. Oh, you're one, Ness. You're a good girl. Dad baptized Sue down here? Yeah, I know. <sighs> if it wasn't for your pops, I don't think Stu would have made it. Not after the raw deal he got. What happened? You missed a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, about the time you left, Stu got himself in a little trouble with a girl over in Devonshire. Long story short, they had a little girl named Ellie. <laughs> Wait, Stu's a dad. Can, can I just tell you about this, please? Sorry, I can't the mom split with some other guy and left Stu to raise Ellie all by himself. But he was fine with it. He really loved Ellie. But Ellie got sick and died, Ness. Something called neuroblastoma, something kids get, some kind of cancer. Oh, Your dad was there through all of it. Cried with him, grieved with him, <laughs> reading stuff out of that Bible of his. No offense, Ness, I know you believe in all this Jesus stuff, but I don't get it. But to pull Stu back from where he was, there has to be something to it. Oh, man. I just had a repressed memory. <laughs> What's that? Crusty old Frank Snodgrass spotted us smoking right over there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys and fellas are breathing the fires of hell. Help me tell the world. I was so scared I ran home and told on myself. Oh, such a dork. <laughs> that was so unnecessary. How was oh. I supposed to know you had Alzheimer's? <laughs> I got poor Frank. I forgot all about us two minutes after we were gone. <laughs> I wonder what ever happened to Mr. Snodgrass. <laughs> he died. 
stupid. <laughs> he was like 90. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> I mean, shortly after that, what happened to him? Um, no, mom told me he laid in Shady Oaks for a couple years before he died. That sucks. Yeah. Tell me about it. I want to go quick. Not like that. Me too. That's what I love about your dad. He's out there living life, having fun, not worried about having the big one. I mean, he knows it's coming and all, but you never know it. What are you talking about? You know the thing. What thing, Don? The thing with your dad's heart. He's a, a, a aortic stenosis. How can you not know? Dad. Dad, is it true? No, 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 Dad. Please, no, I don't want to lose you. Honey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm not. <laughs> not at all. Sweetheart, listen, this is not, this is not the end for me. But it's a new beginning. Remember that we were not created just for this world, but for the next. And Jesus offers me rest. <laughs> and honey, I am so looking forward to that. Tomorrow brings enough worries of its own. And today, it's enough trouble for today. And do you know what trouble it is today? What? I have a fresh baked raspberry <laughs> pie, baked by Mrs. Parsons, just sitting in the refrigerator, waiting for someone to eat it. Will you help me with that problem? <laughs> within 48 hours of the reading of the will. What time was that? Six o'clock. I like that. Good job. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh my God, you're welcome. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Yeah, what's going on over there? Oh, Eli's writing a script about yours truly. What? No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, Don! <laughs> Thank you so much. I wouldn't miss it. Plus, it's Willow Falls. What else is there to do on a Friday night? <laughs> True. I'm gonna grab a drink. You guys want anything? No, I'm good. Excuse me. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah. Give me Susquehanna 2222. Hello, Derek. Good evening, Miss Ness. I see you're looking lovely, as always. Such a charmer. No beer tonight, huh? Red Bull. Yes, me wings. Hey, that's some setup down there. It's a JVC. Top of the line. Wow, that looks expensive, Derek. It's a rental. Good evening, and welcome to E! News. I am David. Hey, look! Her Ness is on TV! Hey, Ness! You're on the National TV News! The question not everyone's mind is, what happened to Caroline? Well, Apparently, she popped up in a local commercial in a small town in Ohio called Willow Falls. Let's have a look. Some people say I look like Caroline. That's because I'm and my taxes are complicated. That's why I hired a team of CPAs to help keep me out of trouble. Hi, Greg. Hi, Kara. Why are you spending so much to have your taxes done? Tax 29 offers professional, affordable tax preparation starting at only $29. 
Call Tax 29 today and let them help keep you out of trouble. Trust me, I might know a thing or two about trouble. That commercial has been making the rounds, and I must say, Kara looks just radiant. Do you agree, David? I couldn't agree more. She looks absolutely beautiful. And may I say, that commercial was very well done. I mean, this is a local spot, and I've got to say, bravo. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, for another great night of true horror. Tonight's film that takes us through the wee hours is the 1931 classic <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> Change of plans, folks. I'm taking over the Cleve Hammer show, and we're not watching Frankenstein. We're going to watch one of my films. Now, this one's from way back. <laughs> Not again, Cleve. Not again. <laughs> this one's from early on in my career. So grab your popcorn, snacks, and drinks, and let's get into the first act of Silver Hello, Kara. Oh, yeah. Vincent. Hello, stranger. Careful, Don. Don't get too close. Vince is a dirt bag. He'll ruin your life. Mm. That's not true, Kara. And I'm here to extend a lifeline. Who is this guy? Stu, meet Vincent Plarmo my drug-pushing agent. So I'm gonna make this brief. I came a long way to find you. Go ahead, I'm listening. The fact is, people liked you. And that charming little commercial you did, they liked your attitude that you had towards that embarrassing moment. Okay. When people like you, then Hollywood wants to book you. And they do. You're getting calls for auditions. No, Kara, these aren't the cattle calls that you're used to. I have three films ready to book you. All we have to do is confirm. You're back on top, Kara. No, Vince, I'm sorry. What do you mean, no? Now, Kara? Don't call me Kara. My name's Vanessa. Did you even know that? Okay, Vanessa, what are you gonna do? You're gonna get a job at a local feed store, make minimum wage with these primates? We're gonna make our own movie right here. Aside from acting, what do you know about making movies? Not much, but a few of these guys do. And they care about me. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go, we have movies hey, man, to make. you need to relax. It doesn't concern you. Not this time, Vince. It's over. Listen, you want to stay here and play community theater with these hayseeds? Be my guest. But just remember, you'll never be anything more than a junkie. I was going to eat that. This is a thousand dollar suit, you little idiot. Chief, why don't you pick on somebody your own size? What are you supposed to be? 
I'm Cleve Hammer. Is he serious? Derek, no. <laughs> serious as a heart attack. <laughs> he even drops like a dirt bag too. <laughs> Sorry, John. I know I'm supposed to be more like Jesus and all. But that needed done. To be honest with you, it felt really good. <laughs> I bet it did. Do you think we should get him up? Come on, buddy. You hit me. I'm gonna sue you. Sheriff, you saw it. As far as I know, you walked in here with that busted nose. You gotta be kidding me. Come on, friend. Let's get you where you need to be. What do you say, Cleve? Next week, we'll show a double feature of romantic comedy. No! No! <laughs> I bet if I pound a few of these, and he'll change his mind. Oh, oh. We'll be right back. John, what is it you're proposing? I mean, trust me, we want to help, but we just don't know how much we can do. Ladies and gentlemen, I am no expert, but it doesn't take an expert to realize that this this is a great movie in the making. John, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Willow Falls finances are well in order. Books are balanced. It's just that we couldn't possibly finance a movie. Those things, they cost millions of dollars. <laughs> that is the best part. I am not asking for a dime. You see, Stu and his crew are going to do all the production work free of charge. That is their investment. I'm asking you all for the full support of the town's resources. That is the committee's investment. For example, Buck. Yes, sir. Scene 28 is a rain scene. Would you be able to bring out one of your host trucks and give us some dang rain? You can count on me. All right. Sheriff. Yes, sir. Scene yes, sir. 59. Calls for a police car. Would you be able to do that? Just tell me when and where. All right. See, that's what I'm talking about. We have known each other for a lot, a lot of years. And for many of those years, you trusted me in being your pastor. All I'm asking is that you trust me one last time. You see, this film is about Willow Falls, shot in Willow Falls about and by the good people of Willow Falls and our own homegrown, famous Hollywood actress, my daughter Ness, is going to be starring in it, a.k.a. Carolini. John, just one question. Ask away. This script? Yes. Does it call for a mayor? <laughs> yes, it does. Can I play him? I want to be in this picture. Mayor, consider it done. Well, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to grant full support to this movie passes unanimously. All right. Thank you. Thank you. This is going to be a lot of fun. Dad really got the ball rolling. Dawn ran right down to put the word out about what had just happened at the council meeting. You would have thought the Olympics were going to be hosted in Willow Falls the way they were planning the press rollout. We were busy over at Spirit Productions preparing for the big project. Derek even signed on to work with us. You are not going to believe this. Turns out Derek is a USC graduate with a film degree. <laughs> the big guy knows more about composition than any of us. Derek and I have become good friends.
we are each other's support system. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. We're about to begin. Thank you. Now, some of you may not have heard, Willow Will Fox is making a movie, huh? Come on. Yeah. This little lady needs no introduction. And many of you know her as Kara Linney. But to us, she's just sweet old Ness. Come on up here. Now, Ness, it's no secret this town loves you. And we want to present you with a little bit of thank you. Councilwoman Zelinsky. <laughs> you know that we are well aware that you could have went to Hollywood to restart your career. Yet, you chose your hometown of Willow Falls. And these are just a few little gifts of appreciation. Lorraine? Ness, on behalf of the town of Willow Falls, we would like to present you with a key to the city. There you go. There you go, hon. There's more. There's more. Due to the generosity of our business people, we were able to raise $11,487 for expenses. We can't let our cast and crew go hungry now, can we? Thank you. When I came back to Willow Falls, I came to hide. I wanted to hide from everyone, even the people who loved me. I wanted to hide from God and he loves me the most. And you were patient. My friends were patient. And my father, my father was so patient. And my heavenly father, he was the most patient of all. My life in California was so far from God. Jesus tells the story of the shepherd even the 99 to find the one lost sheep. That was me. I'm the one he left to find. And I'm so grateful that he did. Because of his mercy and grace, I have been given a second chance. Guys, you know it's Friday. You know what that means. No, what does it mean? It's Fried Fish Friday. Fin and feather. Cleave you in. Ah, I reckon. And I'm paying this time. You hear that, John? John. Dad.
always said, you can tell how good someone lived by how good they died. I never knew what that meant until now. There was no fear in John Shostrom's last moments. Dad was buried on a Saturday. Pastor O'Malley delivered a beautiful sermon. To where I am Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John Sostrom and I have not always seen eye to eye. No, we have not. But the truth is, I have never known a better man. I should be so lucky if my life bear half the fruit as John's did. I half expected Dad to sit up in his casket. I have to stop and cry a lot. Between Derek, Stu, and Don, I have more than enough support, though. It helps to know he is happy with Mom, and thanks to Jesus, I'll get to see him again. It's a shame he's going to miss this, though. Today is the first day of shooting our movie here in Willow Falls. Call time in 45 minutes. I've never been more nervous and excited for anything. But first, I have to conduct some old business. Dad pounded this in 15 years ago to make a point. The last remnant of my old life. That last abiding nail. What's with the hammer? Cheers. Knock yourself out. Huh, you wish. Claire's hammer! I'm using that joke for the next show. I wouldn't.
the sun.